Hi, I'm Sherry, and today I thought I'd talk to you about Apologia's Young Explorer series. Now, I happen to be showcasing the Exploring Creation Zoology 1 and 2. We have also done the Astronomy and the Land Animals of the Sixth Day. They also offer Chemistry and Physics, Botany, and Human Anatomy. These are geared for children ages, well, about kindergarten through sixth grade. I will talk about that in a moment average cost is around $30. Now if you go, and I am not getting paid to say this either, if you go to rainbowresource.com and you go in and look for these, you can download an entire lesson on these books. And I highly recommend that you do that because you can literally do an entire lesson and see if it fits your learning style and your kids before you make a purchase. Uh, let's see. Okay. Now they also offer work, uh, not workbooks, uh, notebooking, spiral bound notebooks that you can buy that correlate with each of these books. I think they're around 15 to $20. Uh, I have used them. I use them for these two. The problem is I don't know what happened to them. I'm pretty sure I actually tossed them because at some point you can't keep everything. I know sad, but true. But I did uh, download a few of the pages so you can look at them. And again, you can download those pages as well and try them out. Okay, now before I get into the nitty gritty, I wanna talk about something. When I said they were for K through sixth, I am telling you right now, people, I have been homeschooling and I have been in the education arena even longer, but um, I've been homeschooling for over 25 years. I have tried the, um, like let's do everything in the textbook type from the beginning until now if I could go back in time and tell myself this is what I'd tell her whatever you do don't push the nitty-gritty educational stuff yeah educational you know what I'm saying on your younger kids it just I think it just really destroys their love of learning and for the younger kids and I'm talking K up until third, if you have a kid who's a little bit more, I don't want to use the word behind, but I think you get what I'm saying, maybe even fourth grade. Uh, they don't do well with this type of thing. One, they're not going to remember it because I, case in point, did astronomy with my son. We did lap booking, we did the whole thing, and recently, maybe about a year ago, I had mentioned to him, yeah, we're going to do astronomy again for high school, and he said, we did astronomy before, and I was like, what? Uh, yeah, we did a whole year's worth of astronomy. And he's like, well, maybe I remember a little bit of it. I'm like, maybe? So I'm, I'm telling you right now, you can do all this work and it'll be in their head and out of their head. So I am from the school of thought of keeping it much more simple for the younger kids. And how you would do that is, let's just say you want to learn about eagles. Just get some books from the library or get your own library books in your home maybe watch some uh, YouTube or Nat Geo videos on eagles, just read to them, let them play with stuffed animals, or maybe there's a field trip that has like eagles, things like that, good and done. It doesn't take a lot of planning, it doesn't take a lot of thought, yet the kids will learn and enjoy it and keep the unit studies short. I'm talking two to four weeks, done. Now, if you have state requirements, and they need to buckle down and do more of this type of thing to show their work or whatever. I don't know of too many states that would be like that, but just in case. Then yeah, these are a good, um, a good book to use. I have used like Bob Jones science books uh, in the beginning because that was pretty much all that was available and it just really was dry and really took the fun out of learning. So that's where I stand when I say this. Now I know some people really like to go to the textbook and they really like to hammer down the information with their kids. And then there's others that are um, much more relaxed and child led. You have to figure out which you are, but this is a good middle of the road. Now the apology is here exploring creation stuff is Charlotte Mason based. Jeannie Fulbright, the author, really works hard to tie in a lot of the Charlotte Mason method ideas but again, folks, this is a textbook, so it's not 100% Charlotte Mason. And Charlotte Mason would be more reading books written on the specific critters by authors who knew and loved that subject, okay? So I tend to be a little middle of the road, but what I would do, and this is how we used it, we would do, okay, so in here I'm gonna show you the whale unit. 
what I did is I went to the library and I got as many books as I could, ones that had lots of great photos and data, others that were more story-like, and some that were fictional, just for some fun. And we would read those books while covering this chapter. And that really um, solidified the situation, really brought it more into the Charlotte Mason realm, in my opinion. And it also kept his interest longer, and it helped me spread this out. This is usually about a semester's worth if you do it very quickly. And I don't believe in that, because if you're pushing that information so fast, it's in one ear, not the other. So I like to slow it down. Yes, you can turn it into a year study, but that might be too long. I did about a semester and a half. Now, another way of getting around that, because I have heard a lot of people say it's so boring to just learn about swimming creatures for an entire year or entire semester, what you could do is switch between. This is easy because it's both on the fifth day, so you don't have to confuse the student. Maybe uh, six weeks of this, six weeks of that, go back and forth. You can kind of, you know, spruce it up that way. So keep that in mind. Now, another thing um, that you can do is add in the notebooking that correlate with these. Um, for the younger kids, they do have like lap booking units in there or little mini pocket books, things like that. And that's pretty much what we did. But there's also a bunch of other things. And I did download a few of the pages. Like for instance, this is on, um, uh, what is this? Oh no, this is the ocean. Okay, so they had, now mind you, these are all in color in the notebook but uh, I just copy these off. So they have things like the crossword puzzles. They have diving deeper situations like why don't the oceans freeze? I always thought it was because, you know, the oceans all had their own electrical blanket. Hardy har har, just kidding. But they have things like that that you can do extra projects that are not listed in this book. And they have like review questions if you're into that. A lot of times with the review questions, I would just ask him. I'd just go through a few of them that I felt were important and say, hey, um, what exactly are plankton again? But if you're having the kid narrate after you're done reading, this is pretty much, you know, already done. So in those notebooks, they have the schedule, they have facts, they have review questions, notebooking, activities, projects, scripture copy work, which was very nice. Um, if you have a child that likes to do vocabulary words, there's that section. Uh, there's more experiments and projects. Then additional ideas, field trip uh, forms that they can come back and write stuff on, and uh, a review of the situation. Okay. Sadly, like I said, I don't have that to show you, but you can find uh, reviews of that on YouTube or just go to the websites and look at them. All right, so let's take a look here. Now, if you go to the rainbowresource.com, like I told you, you can download a free lesson, and I highly recommend that. I can't say that enough. But here she talks about um, incrementing the lessons, narration. This is a good read. It's in all the books. Notebooking, projects, experiments, um, immersion approach, uh, course website, and then I love this. She gives you a rundown of all the items you need to do the different projects in each lesson. I love that. That really saves you a lot of time of having to flip through and, hey, what do I need? And you could almost either just copy this um, and just write check marks on it so you're obviously not writing in your book, or you could just make some notes of everything you just need for lesson one. You have everything, say, for a long arm stapler or something, okay? And then when you're out and about, you can get everything you need. I love that. Then it goes right into your table of contents so you know what you're studying. Oh, and by the way, what I love about this series, you don't really have to go in the exact order. Okay, now I would start with what is zoology, but um, maybe you're in the dead of winter and there's not a whole lot of, you're up north and there's not that many birds out to really study, but maybe you want to um, skip over into, I don't know. Well, I guess insects wouldn't be around in the winter either. All right, so this is probably one I would start in the spring. But the swimming creatures you could definitely do. But you don't necessarily have to go in the exact order. Some of these make sense. Like you would want to cover birds of a feather first before learning about how they fly. That kind of a thing. This one maybe not quite so much as this one that you can move around. Just keep that in mind. So again, you can download that whole lesson uh, through Rainbow Resource. I, that's the only one I found. I'm sure there's more. But you can see it is textbookish, okay? But the way she has it here, it's more conversationally laid out, and so you feel like someone's just talking to you like a good friend. 
and I wouldn't read the whole chapter in one sitting. I would just read what I know my child could handle. Probably just cover what is zoology section and call it a day. Then the next day we might pick up the classification. In the notebook, like I said, they have um, a schedule that you can follow or you can make up your own. My kid did better with shorter lessons and so that's how I kept it. See, there's no reason for a kindergartner to know what all these different classes are and stuff like that. Even the older kids wouldn't remember it all, but there you go. So you go through here, you just work your way through, and then it has like in the middle of the lesson you've got like a notebook activity. You can use your own notebook or you can use the one you purchase. You go through here, oh, we've got some experiments, so on and so forth, until you come to the end, you've got like a, a project here. This is a scavenger hunt, shows you how to make your little um, nature notebook thing, and then you go from there. So that's how they all pretty much work. For the uh, swimming creatures of the fifth day, I believe it's the chapter on whales that you can download. And there's all kinds of activities, like I said in here, and it has good information. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel, people. Yes, it's nice to be able to throw together unit studies, and there's a lot of good ones out there if people have already taken the time to do. Or you might want to create your own. But sometimes, if you're like me, you're not really that much into science. Uh, you know, we all have our subjects. Mine is history. I love, love, love science. Eh. So I just get these, I follow it, I don't have to do too much thinking, I added in our own activities sometimes, and definitely books, and it was good. So that is how we handled the um, Apologia's Young Explorer series. And if I'm going to cover this real fast, I might as well do it, make this a 15 minute video. Sorry, I hope you're all hanging on. So basically my pros, the work is done for you. It does have excellent information, but not overkill. It is excellent as a backbone or a starting point if you want to jump off and create your own units. It's very helpful when you don't have time or the energy to do it all on your own, and most of us don't. Um, you can pretty much go in any order, and I could start with the swimming creatures and then back over to the flying creatures or do the land animals or however I want to lay it out. The experiments and the projects are fairly easy to do and it's easy to find the supplies. And there is more than enough um, uh, for your age range, more than enough information in here for them. And it does fairly follow this uh, Charlotte Mason path. The cons, again, it's a textbook. So if you're anti-textbook, maybe just getting this and using it for information for you as a jumping point. Um, if you're inexperienced in homeschooling, and by that I mean you're new to it and you haven't uh, done this enough to realize it's okay not to do everything, it may make you feel like you have to do all the chapters. You don't, by the way. But don't let all the stuff in books, any of these books, or any books ever, make you feel like you have to do it all. You don't. Um, it, like I said, it can kind of push for one semester's worth, but you really should stretch it out. But a year might be too long, but a semester and a half, pretty good. The um, Again, it's a textbook, and it's not 100% Charlotte Mason. So those are my thoughts on this. I hope this has helped you. Talk to other people who have used this. I know it's a popular program. Go ahead and check out more people's YouTubes. Um, I will link down below in the description box a couple blog posts I did when my son was doing this. Sadly, I thought I had one where he had... I had uh, shown the whole level of the sea from the top of the sea down to the bottom project, but I, I don't know. If I have it on the blog, I will put a link. If not, I at least have one that's a short little ditty on how we started it. So look for those down below. I'll go ahead and link these two um, over on Reese's Rainbow. Reese's, yes, Reese's Rainbow, by the way, is a very good program. Um, Rainbow Resource for... Um, finding these and getting those downloads. Okay, folks, until next time, take care. Be sure to like, subscribe, and uh, leave questions or comments down below. Take care.